All right, this could be a great night. I've got some Coca-Cola, video games, controller, strategy guides. All right, time to quench my thirst with some Coca- -co Pepsi? Where's my Coke? Everything's replaced with Pepsi? Where the hell's all this Pepsi coming from? What the hell, again? Where the hell's all this Pepsi coming from? You know, it looks like I've got a bad case of Pepsi invaders. There's only one solution to this problem. And that's with the rarest game ever to grace the Atari. The 1980s gave birth to one crazy cola war that became an epic battle between rivals Coke and Pepsi. But before all those crazy product placements and movies, the new Coke debacle, and Michael Jackson's hair being set on fire from recording his Pepsi commercial, <laughs> there's always one small footnote in history that everyone seems to gloss over. And it's one of the biggest shots Coke ever fired across the bow of Pepsi. And that shot was a little known title called Coke Wins, or if some have dubbed it, Pepsi Invaders. Now this obscure title was a video game created internally by Coca-Cola, which allowed you to blast away at the competitor Pepsi. This game is not only the rarest Atari game in existence, but it's also a title that stumped everyone online on how it came to be. But after doing my own deep dive research on this game, I finally cracked the code. In 1982, Coca-Cola was on a roll. Diet Coke had just been released banking $6 billion and their stock price had just doubled all in one year. But with all that newfound income, they decided, well, hell, let's just buy a movie studio. So they plopped down $700 million and acquired Columbia Pictures. Ah, mere chump change for any Hyrulean. Columbia Pictures had their hands in everything by 1982. Movies, TV, radio, records, and even video games? Huh? Yep, you heard right, because Columbia Pictures purchased video game maker Gottlieb in 1977. And back then, they were just a small time pinball company. But starting in 1980, well, they set their sights on video games by releasing the game New York, New York, New York, New York, New York, New York. Hey, 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 get out of here! This town isn't big enough for all of us. <laughs> now, the game New York, New York is one of those Galaga looking space shooter up type games. But the weird thing about this title is that you have New York buildings floating around in the background. Who the hell thought this would be a good idea? Talk about an asinine execution. Well, then they released a follow up game called No Man's Land, which looks like a horrible rehash of the game Frogger, but with tanks. They also released this game here called Reactor, which is, uh, yeah, just crazy batshit bazonkers. Where the point in the game is to smash all the ships into the side of the screen, except for yourself. Ah! Well, at least it has this cool funky beat. Oh yeah! Finally, their payoff came in 1982 when Gottlieb released Qbert. Yeah, now we're talking. This is a classic video game that is still loved and remembered to this day. So Gottlieb had finally found their first arcade hit, and the next logical step was to port that sucker onto the Atari. But Atari just wasn't interested in porting over Qbert, but also their game, Reactor? Oh, for God fucking sake. So now you're probably wondering, what the hell does all this have to do with that Coca-Cola game? Well, hold on, Mr. Impatient, I'm getting there. Because with Gottlieb finally having a hit game and a new Atari partnership under their belts, their future in the video game world under Columbia Pictures and Coca-Cola looked pretty bright. At the end of 1982, Coca-Cola was getting ready for their annual sales convention in February. And it was decided that one of the cool items they would include in their 1983 swag bags was a custom-made Atari game to showcase the company's future sales strategy in that video game market. And since Coca-Cola was now buddy-buddy with Atari, they ended up working together and commissioned Atari game developer Christopher Omerzu to help them create that custom game to hand out at their convention. 
Now, thankfully, yes, I do have an original copy in my hands here to review today. And let me just tell you, this was damn near impossible to find because Coca-Cola only made 125 copies to hand out to potential clients in 1983. And when they did hand these out to potential clients, they didn't come in these fancy packages. Nope, I ended up buying this online. Instead, these games came in this little plain white box with a small red sticker on it reading, Atari goes better with Coke. Yep, pretty simple, because after all, it was just a swag bag item. But as for the video game itself, the cartridge is just as simple. There's no label on the front or the side or any identifying marks of any kind except for this little hole right here and the screw right above it. Ah, that's so lame. But again, I understand because it was a swag bag item back in 1983 when people didn't even understand what this game would be. So they probably tried to do it as cheap as possible and threw it in the bag. So now it begs the question, what does this game look like? And how's the gameplay? Wait a minute. This game kind of looks like Space Invaders. Hmm? Holy shit, it is Space Invaders. And a heavily modified version of the game at that. Okay, okay, I know this might seem a little underwhelming on the surface, but let's think about this for a second. Game developer Omer Zhu was asked to make a game for Coca-Cola. He decided to modify one of the most recognized and popular Atari games at the time into a game that blasts the shit out of its competitor, Pepsi. Now the original Space Invaders game featured a spaceship shooting up at six rows of aliens. But in this game, those rows were converted into six rows of Pepsi letters. And this last column here of aliens were left untouched because, uh, well, I guess those Pepsi CEOs probably all look like alien assholes anyway, so fuck them. Take that! And of course, you get to do all this with your Coca Cola bottle shaped spaceship in order to take out all those aggressions on your competition. And as for that flying saucer up there, this was also turned into a Pepsi logo? Damn! Talk about Coke fans getting their revenge! <clears throat> I gotta say, the existence of this game is just mind-blowing. Coke actually released a game internally that allowed them to blow away the competitor. What? And this game was made during the height of the Cola Wars. I'm surprised that no one else has made a bigger deal about this game, because this is damn near epic. This is like McDonald's making a game in the 1980s that blows up Burger King, or the WWF blowing up WCW. And in this game, you have Pepsi letters, the Pepsi logo, I mean, my God, this must be the most copyright infringing video game ever to grace mankind. Now, even though this Coca-Cola game is modified from Space Invaders, the game developer did add in a few additional tweaks. Instead of the game just ending after you lose a certain amount of lives or having the aliens reach the ground, ah! this Coca-Cola game only ends after the counter at the bottom of the screen reaches zero. Until that happens, you'll get the blast away of all those evil corporation letters until achieving that highest score possible. Even if it means you have to clear the board multiple times. Once that counter reaches zero, well the game finally ends and flashes... Coke wins! Coke wins! Coke wins! And from the sounds of it, I think they took the sound effect from the Pac-Man game too. God, that's annoying. Oh yeah, more like Pac-Man wins. And of course, it's this crazy endgame screen that gave this game the name of Coke Wins. Because once defeating Pepsi, well, Coke is the ultimate winner of the Coke Wars. Now over the years, fans of Atari have dubbed this game Pepsi Invaders. And I gotta say that is a better title, but of course, when you have a title like that, it glorifies Pepsi over Coke and, well, Coca-Cola wouldn't want that. And seeing that Coca-Cola had produced 125 copies of this game, which were only handed out to convention attendees, well, it makes this game super damn impossible to find. Now, being someone that's actually attended a few of these high profile company meetings in the past, I can say that without a doubt that out of 125 of these copies, sadly, probably half of those were probably tossed out immediately after because, well, hey, they were given out to corporate bigwigs. Then half of those were probably thrown out because of the missing label thing. And then probably half of those copies were probably discarded, lost, or destroyed, etc. So I think it's a safe bet to say that there are probably only around 15 copies left of Coke Wins in existence today. 
In fact, my research also shows that only five of these copies have popped up on eBay in the last 15 years. So this game right here is without a doubt the rarest Atari game ever to own, period. <sighs> All right, now that things are back to normal, time to play me some Coke wins since those Pepsi invaders have been eradicated. Now I'll just have myself some uh, Kool-Aid. What? what the, everything's turned into Kool-Aid? Oh yeah! Ah!